Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to today's roundup. I've got four stories for you today, starting with the news that the World Motorsport Council has approved a number of changes to the Formula 1 regulations as the sport tries to safeguard itself in light of the current global situation. As covered on Tuesday, teams had already agreed to the changes and it was thought that approval from the WMSC wouldn't be an issue. And we now have official confirmation of all the new rules, rules which James Allen described on Twitter as the biggest changes to F1 in a generation. I'm just going to go over a few of the headline changes, but there is a link in the description down below to the full release from the FIA if you'd like to have a proper read of everything that's in there. So starting with the technical regulations, there will be a freeze on a list of components between 2020 and 2021, including the chassis, gearbox and other mechanical components and impact structures. There will also be a token system, so a limited number of modifications can be made as needed and the F1 website points out McLaren switch to Mercedes power next year as an example of a team who will inevitably need to make some kind of modifications. There will also be restrictions on power unit upgrades this year and the cars are getting heavier again with the minimum weight increasing by 3 kilograms to 749. As for the sporting regulations, there are changes now in place for 2020 on the provisions for how the sport will hold closed and open events, with a closed event being defined as a race without fans, and surprise surprise an open event as a race with fans, obviously. There has also been a limit put on the amount of aerodynamic testing that can be carried out as well as the possibility of tyre testing taking place during free practice if it's necessary. But the big change here without any doubt is the new aero handicap system. I will quote the release directly here. It says for 2021, a further reduction in aerodynamic testing and the introduction of a bias between championship position and ATR limitations, the ATR bias will be linear between P1 and P10. I know I explained this on Tuesday, but for those who missed that video, in short, the idea is that a benchmark figure will be set for how much aerodynamic development can be carried out, so time in the wind tunnel and CFD research, with the world champions initially only being able to develop up to 90% of that figure and the team in last place being allowed 112.5% for 2021. However, that will reduce from 2022 onwards with the champions only being allowed 70% and the team in 10th place getting 115. This aero handicap is quite obviously something that the sport is hoping will result in a much closer and more competitive field. I get the impression though it might split opinion. And the final thing worth noting is the change to the 2021 financial regulations, although this has been coming for a while, so it won't come as too much of a surprise. But the cost cap has now finally, officially been reduced to $145 million for next year and will eventually drop to $135 million for the 2023 to 2025 seasons. And that is based on a 21 race calendar with adjustments to that cap being made should there be, for example, fewer races than 21. There is also an updated list of exclusions to that cost cap. Again, I know this isn't everything that was included, just the headlines. And there is a link down below to the full release if you're interested. Now, I want to try and keep these news videos to the facts. But if you are interested in what I've got to say about all of this, I will be live with Stuart and Dan this Sunday at 5pm UK time to discuss all of this and probably a lot more. And if you can't catch it live, it will be uploaded on YouTube shortly afterwards. Moving on, and it was confirmed on Tuesday that McLaren are set to make around 1,200 members of staff redundant, and that is across its road car division, technology and racing teams, in order to reduce costs and as part of a major restructuring of the business. That number, by the way, is believed to be around 25% of their overall workforce. A few weeks back, it was reported that McLaren were considering remortgaging its classic cars and technology centre, and last month the F1 team also furloughed some of its staff. Now, according to Sky Sports and the BBC, around 70 members of the F1 team will be made redundant, although that is not believed to be the final number, as staff consultations are apparently still taking place. And although this initial round of layoffs is as a result of the current global pandemic, it is believed that there will be a second round of layoffs in 2021 to help the team to meet the agreed budget cap level. On the announcement regarding redundancies, McLaren Group's Executive Chairman Paul Walsh said, we deeply regret the impact that this restructure will have on all of our people, but especially those whose jobs may be affected. It is a course of action we have worked hard to avoid, having already undertaken dramatic cost-saving measures across all areas of the business. But we now have no other choice but to reduce the size of our workforce. This is undoubtedly a challenging time for our company, and particularly our people, but we plan to emerge as an efficient, sustainable business with a clear course for returning to growth. Unfortunately, this is unlikely to be the last story of this nature as many teams, especially the big ones, will probably have to cut staffing levels to meet the 2021 cost cap 
although it is also an option to redeploy staff, something Ferrari have already said is a possibility, and reports even surfaced last week stating that Ferrari were considering entering IndyCar alongside Formula One. Next up, Gunther Steiner has said that he hopes the new agreed cost cap will encourage new teams to enter Formula One, but has warned that the sport remains very expensive despite the attempts to reduce costs. Speaking to Sky Sports F1, the Haas boss said, For teams coming in when the budget cap is discussed, there are always some people out there who think they can make money with it. It is still a very expensive sport. You still need to invest an awful lot of money to get somewhere. You start with one number, and after five years, this number has tripled or quadrupled what you said before. So now, there is a stake in the ground saying, this is the maximum you can spend by regulation. Before, it was how long is a piece of string? How much do you want to invest? So I think it's a good thing, and hopefully, we can get corporates or car manufacturers, which would be best, to invest in Formula One. Now, there is often a lot of talk about new teams and maybe manufacturers joining Formula One, but there are rumours circulating, courtesy of former team boss Giancarlo Minardi, that Mercedes and Renault are both looking to sell their teams by the end of 2021. And although not as a result of that rumour, Steiner was asked by Sky Sports if the new cap means the current group of teams are more likely to stick around long term, to which he answered, The proof is in the pudding, and when we get to sign the new Concord Agreement for the next five years, we'll see if these people will stay in the sport. I think if they were staying before, it is a lot more interesting now. And the future of Mercedes and Renault is the topic for today's question. Which one of those two do you think is most likely to walk away from Formula One at the end of 2021? You can, as ever, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below or vote on the poll at the top right of the screen. And I'll reveal the results of that poll in a video or over on social media later this week. And finally, the FIA have set up a new hotline that is open to everyone. Yes, that includes the public to allow them to report alleged violations of sporting ethics and integrity. The governing body said that the idea behind the hotline is to safeguard the integrity and reputation of motorsport and automobile mobility worldwide, and that the new measures aim to reflect the FIA's zero-tolerance approach towards misconduct. The areas which can be reported are alleged violations of the FIA ethical principles, including financial misconduct or other legal, regulatory and ethical breaches, alleged issues related to sport integrity and or manipulation of competitions, and alleged violations of the FIA anti-doping regulations. And if reports are made, full confidentiality has been guaranteed by the governing body. Now, this may sound as though it could lead to chaos, and it possibly will, but the FIA have insisted that anyone found to be using the platform recklessly or by providing misleading information could face criminal charges. For those interested, the hotline can be accessed at FIAethicsline.com, where users will be asked to answer a series of questions so that the FIA can get as much information as possible before investigating. That is it though for this video. I will be back soon with more content as ever, but in the meantime, don't forget that you can of course follow me over on social media and all of the links you need for that are in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching and hopefully I will catch you again in the next one. Bye-bye.